From Studio 1A in Tampa, Florida, comes a talk show that really feels your pain and tells you like it is. We love America and all that freedom-loving Americans want to protect. Live from coast to coast and on your radio, it's For the People with Keith Allen. We'll help you survive. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. America. I am Keith Allen and proudly welcoming you into hour number two on this Wednesday, August the 30th, 2017. We've got a lot of news we want to talk about. Looking at the Atlantic right now, Tropical Storm Irma is forming as Harvey is battering Louisiana and Texas. This is breaking right now. Irma, the ninth named storm of the 2017 Atlantic hurricane season, has officially formed. Once again, as Harvey moves inland, I'm looking at uh, the weather, weather map right now, and uh, I do the show from Tampa, Florida, so we're always kind of watching the tropics, and as the tropical storm Harvey continues to batter Texas, Louisiana, this new system has made its way into the spotlight, so here we are to talk about a tropical storm Irma officially formed in the East Atlantic Ocean by, the, uh, according to the National Hurricane Center, at 11 a.m. August 30th update, the ninth named storm of the 2017 hurricane season is expected to develop more over the next few days as she makes her way west. Irma, located about 420 miles west of the Cable Verde Islands as of 11 a.m. Wednesday, that's today, the system was packing 50 mile per hour winds as it's moving west at 13 miles an hour. At present, Irma poses no threat to land. The storm, however, is expected to reach hurricane status sometime over the next few days. But uh, meanwhile, Tropical Storm Harvey was located about 30 miles north, northwest of Lake Charles, Louisiana. As of late this morning, the storm that made landfall as a Category 4 hurricane in Texas on Friday has lost much of its punch, packing maximum sustained winds Today, at 45 miles an hour, the system was moving north-northeast at 8 miles an hour, and uh, Harvey is blamed for at least 15 deaths since Friday. Some parts of Houston received more than 50 inches of rain, forcing thousands to evacuate. Uh, Harvey and Irma both formed during the peak of the 2017 hurricane season. Forecasters call that period between mid-August and mid-October the season within the season. This eight-week period is often the most active and dangerous time for tropical cyclone activity, according to NOAA. The peak period is historically responsible for major spikes in tropical weather activity, NOAA said. In fact, it accounts for roughly 78% of all tropical storms uh, days on record, and also the period when 87% of the Category 1 and 2 hurricane days on record occurred. In addition, this period is responsible for a whopping 96% of the major Category 3, 4, and 5 hurricane days. The conditions gradually become less ripe for development in mid-October when increased wind shear tends to reappear and water and air temperatures start cooling. So we're watching uh, Irma. They're saying uh, currently no threat, but they watch it with these models. They can shift um, but uh, there's another wave even behind that, so we're just kind of carefully watching it and carefully watching a lot of the coverage. I don't know about you, but watching it here, I have monitors in Studio 1A here in Tampa, and uh, the floodwaters just uh, continue to plummet. There's hundreds of people still needing to be rescued, um, waiting in water, waiting to be rescued still with boats, still not enough boats, even with the amount of boats they have out there, it's still just not adequate enough uh, to keep up with all of this. Somebody wanting to do something special, even children feel like they need to do something. And I thought this was very touching. There's a, a little boy. His name is Jet. And he was wearing a Houston Texas cap and a Superman cape as he was jumping around his lemonade stand. And he was selling sweet tea, and he wanted to do something for folks out in Houston. And he was given an interview, and this is kind of how that happens. Here we go. Check this out. It's pretty Dad, special. 
Why are you sad? Because there was a hurricane. Aww. Are you looking to help those people down there? Yes. All right, hundreds of dollars uh, raised so far. This charity of choice is the American Red Cross. So whatever charity you want to give, Samaritan's Purse, Red Cross, Salvation Army, or a local fundraiser initiatives, your help is still appreciated and very much needed as poor folks are just trying to trying to get onto higher ground. And for some, uh, some very few able to go back to their houses, uh, but very tough to be able to just travel around just about anywhere there when the rain is still pelting still coming down and uh, doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of relief. And now Louisiana experiencing that, how much rain they get, how much damage happens there. Um, it's just bringing a lot of anxiety to people that uh, either uh, stayed in New Orleans, stayed in Louisiana, and then seeing this appear and seeing what the devastation in Houston. And then obviously the people that relocated where when Houston took folks in during Katrina, Having to endure this all over again is just a big nightmare, and a lot of people that have gone through it just says this is a nightmare, reliving it again. It's just, uh, they say it's kind of like a hell on earth, and I I, um, I, I like camping. I, I, I like kayaking. Um, you know, I like brooks and rivers, but you're not your house underwater, not your belongings, not um, you, people are waiting water, trying, trying to get out of their uh, flood flood areas to, to safety because they could die. Uh, you know things are pretty rough when they tell you do not go into the attic. And I've said this yesterday. Why do they say that? Is because you can get stuck in the attic unless you have an axe. So you can axe through the roof, and that's what a lot of people do. They'll go to sleep. They'll bring their kids up in the attic, and then the attic fills up. And when they're sleeping and then before you know it, you're overtaken and then they find dead bodies in the attic. And that's the biggest fear right now is that once the floodwaters, once they recede, they believe they're going to find a lot of dead in homes, in cars, in in places. Um, and it's going to be very, very sad. So we do pray for the continued relief. We hope more people are found alive and uh, taken care of, and uh, people do the right thing continually. And it just looks like uh, our president just left about uh, 10, 15 minutes ago and is headed back to Washington, D.C. Understand he's going to be back in Texas this Saturday. Did you see that moment with Donald Trump with the Texas flag? That was a, if, if there ever was one, a Kodak moment. That made me so proud, and I'm sure Texas so proud, but as an American, to see Donald Trump in a cap, no no uh, suit and tie, just, hey, man, I'm here, I'm with you, I'm here to help you, and he looked genuine, he looked sincere, uh, and, and, and folks, you know, the president's doing everything he can uh, within his power. Uh, to be able to help, and I believe that. And coming back Saturday for the second time, I think is a beautiful thing. And it's his moment. It's his time. And some people have alluded to the fact this is his real time right now in history because history really will remember this because of the proportions of, of water that have come down that are absolutely historic. But uh, that Trump get this right. And, you know, as many people say that this is not political, um, this, it may not hurt him, but he has, he has an opportunity, uh, to unite this country for the right reasons. Trump didn't make the, the hurricane come to Texas. He didn't do this, but an opportunity to do something wonderful and to show the giving side of him and his nature, uh, and, to kind of bring a little bit more warmth to people that say that Trump comes across a little bit calloused. I get them because, you know, I started my career in New York. Trump doesn't offend me in his brashness. Uh, my dad was a, a personality. Okay. Uh, but my dad was a loving father. Um, he loved us and there was no doubt about it, but that's the person he was an engineer. So if, 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 should I say any more? Uh, he was, you know, he had dry humor. 
So, you know, if my attempts at humor are dry, that's why. But that's just who he was. Trump is who he is. And I had this conversation with a business owner earlier today um, about that very thing about Donald Trump. Uh, He's being who he is. But what's more important and should be really the importance of anybody in this country is his achievements, the things that he is currently working on and doing to better this country and make it great again. And if you don't want to make America great again, if that offends you to make America great again, then I'm sorry. Uh, But personally, I'm really not. I'll say it, but I'm really not because of the fact we've had a president for eight years, Barack Hussein Obama. You, You didn't build it. You didn't do that. You know, uh, lead from behind, let other people do it. That particular mindset uh, is not my idea of a good time. American exceptionalism, I have no problem with that. I think that's a great thing because you know what? There's a lot of things we do better than anybody on the planet. And when it comes to humanitarian efforts worldwide, America does more for charity than any other country in the world, folks. And no wonder. You see the outpouring of support in Texas. That's America, folks. And you know what? That spills over party line. Democrats, Republicans, Tea Partiers, even if you don't even claim a party and affiliation, independence, whatever. It's humanity coming together to help a fellow neighbor. And these are the things that we're supposed to be doing anyway. And I'm hoping that that just makes us more united and unites Texas and the country and connects us even more because that's what it's all about. Don't we all want to win at the end of the day? Don't we all want to do better at the end of the day? We should come together and be able to figure out things such as if this ever happens again, how can we better protect the city and neighborhoods? What what needs to be done? Things like that, having productive conversation, not throwing stones, not ridiculing, not putting down, not looking for negativity, but looking to be constructive. Imagine that if that was the spirit. You know, it is amazing to me that when tough times come, it, it does seem like you do see the better nature of people. And it's a good thing. And I just wish that it, it, it carried over longer than just a natural disaster. But I think that there's real opportunity uh, for people to come together um, despite their differences with politics uh, to, to see more of the humanity in each other and for people to get to know each other. I know it's a strange concept. I'm not saying just on social media, because sometimes that's where people just know each other. But to actually meet somebody, to actually have a conversation with somebody on the phone, not just digitally. That's a problem with the digital age these days, you know. Is that there's wonderful people a block, two blocks down the road from you, and you'd never know it if you didn't, if you never say hi to the person when you're walking by them. Never having a conversation. Now, some of you already do it. Some of you know your neighbors. Now, I understand I have conversation with some people and I have this conversation. They'll, they'll write me and they'll say, but you, you don't know my neighbor. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I understand that. Uh, there's always going to be somebody that's going to be a little bit difficult and challenging to deal with. I, I understand that. Uh, a friend of mine has a, uh, a, a, a home they bought and uh, they were moving in and they had noticed an eyesore. Uh, this this guy decided he wanted to uh, go ahead and have a bunch of junk in the front yard, and that was the first thing you saw when you're coming into this driveway. And they had a discussion with him. First time, didn't say anything. Uh, well, much of. And then they kind of had to be a little bit stern and say, "Look, um, really appreciate you do that. I'd hate to, I'd hate to make a phone call. Will you go make that phone call?" Well, did and uh, uh, he started cleaning up the mess, and then something interesting happened. 
they actually started having a nice, friendly conversation. 